This isn't Fallout, but it feels like Fallout given that I am in an advertisement wasteland, which is why today we're going to be taking a look at Viewly, an ICO that specializes in taking down those advertisements and delivering revenue directly to the content creator. So we'll start with YouTube. YouTube is by far one of the largest video platforms in the world, and it is currently experiencing what's known as the adpocalypse, in which content creators are seeing mere fractions of the revenue that they used to receive for content they made just a few months ago and this has forced a lot of content creators to look around and get supplemental incomes a lot of them have turned to sources like patreon some have altered their content to allow for a bit more advertisements thereby increasing their income and others still have opted for direct paid promotions where they insert awkward advertisements in the middle of their videos so while this may initially seem like a greedy cash grab from YouTube a Google subsidiary the real reasons for the pay cut has a lot more serious and implications for the very fabric of the internet and for content creation at its core and that is how much money is coming from where and why based on this advertisement data i was absolutely floored to find out that less than two percent of skippable ads skippable being the keyword here you can skip them are viewed in their entirety while you can see here that video ads actually really really eclipse uh, television ads, they're still abysmally low in terms of the entirety of the ad being viewed. So the advertisement really isn't as effective as their television counterparts in a number of ways. And companies pay millions, sometimes billions with a B, of dollars per year to have these ads shown to specifically defined demographics, and they're going to take note of this pathetically low penetration rate. This article from Wolf Street, I think, says it very well. Advertisers are tired of the low returns at the risk of potentially throwing their money away for fake clicks and bots. And what's worse is if they can't get a good metric as to who they're advertising to, they risk alienating their customers. Uh, who hasn't seen a YouTube ad over and over and over, the same one, and you just decide, I'm never buying from company X or company Z ever again because they've just saturated my mind with their product. I never want to see it again. That's not what advertisers want at all. Here, the company P&G slashed almost two billion, almost two billion with a B, dollars from advertising expenditures, only to see their bottom line increase. That's right, they cut ads from the internet, and their sales went up. This helps to explain the current adpocalypse situation quite nicely. I mean, all right, let's think about owning a beauty parlor. You pay a person a one hundred dollar bill, hundred bucks, to hand out. 100 flyers to young women in the local area. I mean, it's a beauty parlor after all. Sorry, guys. Uh, later on, that person comes back empty handed. They handed out all the flyers. Great. We'll come to find out 40 of those flyers, let's say they're handed to men. And another 20 of those flyers, they're given to women, but the women are too young to go to the beauty parlor on their own. That means out of the 100 flyers that this person handed out, only 40 of them got into the hands of prospective clients. 25 of those flyers, let's say, out of the 40 were immediately thrown in the garbage or never looked at, which means that only 15% of those flyers were effective. Let's go back and compare that 15%, which sounds pretty bad, with less than 2%. And we're beginning to see why this is a problem for advertising, advertisers. This is a potential loss of major revenue. And this is exactly what Viewly seeks to fix. Essentially what they want to do is they want to reward content creators on a seamless platform. This guy's one of the advisors, Charlie Schramm. Here's Stefan Furlom. And here's the white paper, the, the most important part of any, any project, of course. Let's go ahead and start with the website, actually. You can see here the video platform, it's, it's decentralized. It's pretty straightforward. Everything you would expect to see from a, a front page, it tells all about the problems, the solutions that they offer. Um, I will say as well, my image may look a bit different than yours, my screen, simply due to the fact that I have JavaScript disabled for security reasons. Uh, so this may look a little different. I didn't add Viewly to my trusted sources, just didn't get around to it. So it may look a little different, but nonetheless, all the body of information that you see is going to be the same. 
uh, fine graphics, list of the team, uh, also included in the white paper, a little bit of blog posts and information from Viewly themselves. All in all, a well-built website, looking pretty good. Of course, you know me, I like to check out the GitHub and, and see what's going on there. Uh, this isn't necessarily the best GitHub I've ever seen. A good amount of commits, but a lot of it looks like just smart contracts for the ICO itself. Uh, that's all well and good. It's still early on in the process, and they've released a proof of concept built upon Steemit that we'll see here momentarily. But just wanted to give you guys a look into the GitHub there uh, before we dive right into the white paper, which we'll go ahead and do now. Boom, white paper. You can see 52 pages. Again, a lot of this is padded with the team itself. They do have the roadmap in here, but the team itself is listed, so that adds a good six or seven pages. But they do have the technical explanation as to how their platform is going to work in the white paper as well. So the, the 52 page length is justified. Of course, a legal disclaimer, you're gonna see that with any legitimate corporation, good to see. And some of the highlights I found start down here on page 11, uh, is where we really start getting into the meat of the matter. The first uh, 10 pages or so, they're really just describing the problems with advertisements. I think we've already done that quite well, examining the apocalypse. So let's go ahead and get into the meat of the matter. Uh, page 11, they talk about content creators as a commodity. This is a wonderful segment here, talking about how you know, a lot of the times clickbait is employed to manipulate the audience. Uh, they just want to drag people in to view these videos since YouTube themselves are making money off of the ads that are converted. People are watching the ads. They don't necessarily make money off of content creation, which kind of, it creates a situation where YouTube has one set of values and one set of goals while having to claim they have another set of values. That is, they have the impetus to make money. That's what they want to do. But they also have the stated goal of taking care of their users and providing a platform for good content. So there's kind of a dichotomy in that way. And that results in the content creators being used as a commodity for YouTube to generate revenue with content creators getting a mere fraction of that. Not only that, down on, down on page 13, I really liked this. Many of, many of the other 90 to 95% of creators produce highly valued work, yet too many fall foul of the present system and miss out. So 90 to 95% of individuals who potentially could be making a legitimate sum of money from their content. Now, this doesn't cite any particular study or any particular source, but given what we know about YouTube's ad revenue, the, the ad apocalypse, I could easily see a seamless Patreon platform allowing for 10 times more users to be compensated for their work. So that's just a, a figure that really stuck out to me there. Also, down on page 16, they have a really great segment about direct monetization. Uh, I think this is really great. Here it is, yeah, place where communities thrive. It talks a lot about the reward system, the outdated ad-based model to optimize ad revenue. Um, essentially, Viewly uses the patronage model. Here we go, Viewly has a f Viewly users have flexibility in how they choose to support content creators to become their patrons. In return, creators can set up multiple membership levels with various benefits, such as access to limited content, private chats, discussing ideas for upcoming content, being featured in content, etc. So this automatically kind of gives me an image of Patreon, right? You've seen, if you subscribe $5 a month on Patreon, you get content X. If you subscribe for $15, you get X and Y. They're essentially gamifying the idea of patronizing in a good way, content creators. So it creates an ecosystem of, let's use PewDiePie as an example. Uh, let's say I really enjoy PewDiePie's content and he wants to give me extra access to videos, maybe two or three a month for 10 bucks a month. Well, that's fantastic. I will give him capital, 10 bucks a month, to get access to content I enjoy. That's great, it's patronage. This is exactly how many major works of art were funded throughout history. Um, the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican City, that was commissioned by the Pope and Michelangelo was put up by the Vatican Church, fed, clothed, received some money, received a commission, uh, that whole ordeal for painting the Sistine Chapel. That's an example of patronage. An individual who is an artist or creates cultural works is taken care of. Their needs are met by a person or institution that finds value in their work. So this is a return to a proven model that's been used throughout history and it could revolutionize how content creation occurs on the internet. Uh, down to page 18, another great element I saw. They're straightforward about being decentralized in stages. Um, they say here a non-governing user in uh, user facing web application that connects to this backbone will initially be implemented in traditional web architecture in order to lower barriers to adoption and accelerate growth. 
A decentralized version of the front end app will also be built, but will remain secondary until the decentralized application technology stack matures and it's suitable for larger scale mass adoption. So they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot by pushing a clunky kind of technology onto a mass user base. They're going to use a relatively centralized method to get the ball rolling and then switch over to decentralized technologies. I think that's really great. I think that's a fantastic thing. Uh, as long as a company is straightforward about the level of centralization or decentralization they want to implement, I think that's fine. I'm a bit of a decentralization purist myself, but again, as long as they're straightforward about their, their intent and what they're going to implement and give a general outline as to when and what stipulations they want to see before they implement it, that's all good with me. And next up, vote-based tipping down here. Oh, there it is, scrolled right past. Vote-based tipping. I think that's extremely cool. This is assumingly going to work uh, similar to how Steemit or Reddit works now, where your relationship with the individual whom you're voting for has a direct correlation as to how much payment that person gets. So for instance, if I like every one of PewDiePie's videos, then my one like may not be worth one like. It may be worth one tenth of a like, just because this dissuades manipulation, right? If you get 10 bots to go and, and upvote something of one person, it's not really fair to the organic users who are growing their content organically. So there's some algorithms to, to kind of fix that. And Steemit uses something similar. And it looks like Viewly wants to do exactly that. They want to create a voting-based tipping model where individuals can get paid without direct patronage for their content. And as that content begins to mature, they can solicit actual patrons who will pay them X amount of money for Y amount of content or for a feature or something like that. So all in all, I think this is a very, very interesting kind of historical return to a proven model of patronage and value fit for the internet and fit for digital communication. So the way I see it is this comes at a perfect time. YouTube is experiencing the apocalypse. Corporations like Patreon, they take a large share of, here it is, yeah, they take a large share of the revenue garnished by the actual content producer. Uh, YouTube has no direct method for paying their content producers. They just simply give them ad revenue. Viewly seeks to be everything and more. They want to directly pay content producers, serve as a platform where you can upload your content, and create a system where you can patronize individuals whose content you prefer in a variety of ways. You're not limited to just, oh, I'm gonna tip this person with a coin. You can pay X amount of money a month. You can negotiate what you want for this payment. It's a very, very unique and flexible system. So in my opinion, if Yuli does this right, we're looking at a great project. I think this could be big. Content curation and content creation are huge in the new economy. So it could be positioned very well. Um, again, a quick look at Stefan Furlan. He's the guy uh, from Slovenia who's the CEO, I believe, of this project. Let's check real quick. I don't want to misinform you guys. Just to be sure, CEO was it? Oh, business and organization. Okay, yeah, he's the founder, um, partner, or director of several startups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, from Slovenia, I've heard some good things coming out of Slovenia recently in terms of cryptocurrency. So they're pretty favorable to the scene. Um, not overtly favorable. They're not like Gibraltar or, or uh, Hong Kong or anything like that. But all in all, positioned pretty well. Uh, I like. Where is it at? Oh, yeah, when I had JavaScript enabled, this looked a lot better, but he has a pretty great track record, PhD candidate, CEO of OptiLab, director of an analytics corporation. So all in all, it looks legitimate to me, has over 500 connections. That's really hard to fake in and of itself. Uh, so this looks like a legitimate project, in my opinion. And just a little bit of background uh, from Zero Hedge, researchers have come out and basically said, look, Facebook is really bad for you. Um, and Viewly in their white paper, uh, I didn't point it out, but if, when you're reading it, uh, you can get a good idea. They actually talk about how they use dopamine and other brain chemicals and brain chemistry in humans to gamify how you view content. And it actually has a negative effect on your perception of the world. People who created Facebook knew this. So social media is ripe, just absolutely ready to fall off the tree for change. Uh, this We need a huge overhaul of social media. Uh, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, Google, wh whatever, it, whatever it is, we need an overhaul of media. Even PewDiePie has said that there's an adpocalypse. Look at him without his beard. There's an adpocalypse on YouTube. So we need something, and Viewly seeks to be that something.
If you like this sort of content and it resonated with you, let me know down below in the comments. I'll have all the links that you saw here in the video below in the description. This ICO review was actually inspired by a user named Mendoza Zero. So shout out to you, Mendoza Zero. This was a really great recommendation. So if you guys know of any other ICOs that you're interested in or you think would be worth reviewing, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and I very well may take a look at them if they look awesome like this one. So like I said, guys, thanks so much for everything. Thanks for the support. Uh, all links below in the description. Like, share, subscribe. Check us out on Discord. We would love to have your input. And follow us on Twitter, again, in the description. Thanks again. My name is Paul, and I'll talk to you guys.